That movie poster sucks. Except it's Lubega. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's do it. Brunch. Hit it, boys. You ready for some I was today years old shit? Oh, boy, am I ever. This is for you because I was yesterday years old when I figured this one out. Okay. The Burger King thing. Mm -hmm. It's making the waves. They say at the end, you rule. Yep. And I thought that was just like a fun, hey, you rule. No, it's you're the king. It's because you're the king. You're the king of the burgers. So did you know that? I did. No, you didn't. Yeah, no, but I, I figured gave it out. Time. I figured I, it as out. I was explaining it to you, as I was yeah. explaining it to you, I said you rule, and you're like, "This is gonna be about your rule." It's because this. Um, that well, doesn't I mean, make sense, though. What do you like, mean? It makes sense for them to say to to work well, in some rule language. They're supposed they say, to be the Burger King, exactly. So right. there, it's like a socialist situation that they're saying you are the Burger. King. Like, come to the Burger King and be the Burger King. I'll take the burger, but. I do not yeah. know if I want that responsibility. Yeah, no, like I, I want to go to the Burger King because he's the king of burgers and he knows how to make the best burgers, which I'm going to contest that throne as it is because Burger King sucks ass and not the king of burgers. I want to bring that up at some point that like how you feel about the Burger King. How do you feel about the monarchy? Like Burger King <laughs> having the, the throne right now because you famously not a Burger King guy. Yeah. You fall in line with, I would say, the average American who avoids Burger King. Like yes. goes out of there. Like even if they like fast food, they they want to make a count, so they'll go somewhere else. I will do Burger King. Yeah, like I I, I won't tease of my body. I won't oh. say that I'm uh, that I'm above fast food ever. I right. just had Chipotle for lunch, but I am above Burger King. Yeah, and I think the average American is. But we're in a situation now where they are their scoops. There it is right now. Yeah. So I. I, I'm not torn at all because I respect the hell out of Burger King for putting together an iconic, legendary jingle that I think that we're going to remember for a long time. And as I said last week, like it feels it feels awesome to have like just a pure, unbelievable jingle take over the world. It's it's like a classic advertisement thing. So I give them all the respect in the world. It's not going to make me change my opinion of Burger King, though. Okay, so... The thing of which you're truly a fan is O'Keefe, Reinhardt, and Paul, which is the advertising agency that Correct. Burger King used for this. Yes. And it's not... I, I forget what the name of the advertising agency is that did... That does Geico and Scoops There It Is and all that stuff. That's like the creme de la creme. We did... We talked years ago about if you could do a The Internship movie mm -hmm. and like where they go to Google and they're interns. If you yeah. could be an intern anywhere... And I said I would be that place. I would want to be sitting around with all the the big wigs coming up with all these the crazy guy commercials. commercials. Yeah, yeah, that that would absolutely fascinate me. We should get O'Keefe, Ryan Hard, and Paul on the podcast. Let's do it. They probably want to come on more than Cameron Dicker. Apparently, um, mm. I will say, like Burger King's branding is turned around. I like that they they went back to the old school logo. Yeah, they're doing a lot of old school commercials. Mm -hmm. Now they're going into like, hey, we're just going to put together a nice old-fashioned earworm jingle and let that take over. And it's worked. They, though, they had a... It was Burger King, right? They did the chicken sandwich thing what that was, was basically that? like, buy our chicken sandwich uh, if you like gay people or something. They did some like... I don't know that. Not great, like, baiting. I, I think it was Burger King. If it wasn't them, hilarious. I'm getting them in trouble for something they didn't do. But one of the fast food chains, okay. I think it was, I think they, they came with the sandwich. If I had to pick called, one like, that would do that, it would be Burger King. It was called the Chicken King or something. And okay. in an attempt to take a shot, we did like four episodes about this. Okay. I and like, like weekly all. updates on, because they were trying to raise a certain amount of money. And they were like, if we raise this much money, we give it all to uh, charity. Okay. And everyone was like, yeah, stick it to Chick-fil-A and but and like raise all this money. And I was like, I remember we didn't know how to feel about it. Okay. Where it was like using a good cause clearly for very selfish reasons. Let's look this up. Okay. Burger King chicken <laughs> sandwich charity uh, Chick-fil-A. Doesn't, doesn't look like there's a lot of autofill going on there. 
I just cleared everything. Oh, what do you were, have to be were you re- of? Were you really noticing that? Uh, no, I, I was like, because I was figuring that oh, if this was like, a big this story, isn't a real it, would, thing. it would pop up. Yeah. Gotcha. No, I cleared everything because my Google often, my Google Chrome, I've doxed myself as a Google Chrome <laughs> user. My Google Chrome often will change from Google as its default search engine to Yahoo as its default search engine. Have you ever no experienced good. this? No. Are you a Google Chrome user? Yeah. Really? Yeah, and just never... And this has never happened to you? No. Interesting. Not great. So I looked up why this happens, and it's uh, it's like it's malware. Oh. Which, it, it was like, I know that sounds scary. 15 years ago, or 20 years ago, like this also, would be an issue, but it's say not. M- malware, like malware? I say malware. Like like the Spanish, like mall is bad. French. Spanish is mall as well. I'm a little more sophisticated than you. Okay. Uh, it's malware. Malware? Yeah. Malware. Malware is like your podcast shoes. You wear those to the mall. I would not wear these to the I mall. I know you wouldn't, but like those are the kind of, the, the, that's malware to me. Let's get a little assistance on this. Malware. 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 Gotcha. Malware. So, <laughs> it's it's like a, it's some light malware that you're getting, and <laughs> they <laughs> what they do is they change your uh, search engine to Yahoo, and they get some they get like a little kickback every time you use Yahoo. Interesting. And that's not it. Says it's like do not take this out on Yahoo. I'm like I'm absolutely taking this out on Yahoo. Every time I see Yahoo as a search engine, I'm going to think it's terrorists. Yeah, fair. Yep. Uh, Yahoo is like apparently making a comeback in the search game. I saw probably because of malware. Probably, yeah. yeah. And they're I, I do like the idea of of malware being uh, like not malicious, just like slightly inconvenient. That's what all, <laughs> that's all it's been for me. And I've what I have thought every time. I just I never thought to. Uh, I think well, that I takes away Yahoo the, I th- until think today. That takes away the mal though, like malicious. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I didn't know where it was coming from, and it would just happen every now and then. I assumed that it was like a my Google got compromised or something, or you know, sometimes they won't let you go to. Uh, it'll, you click a link and it'll Ad say like, "Hey, this something. is blocked" or whatever. Yeah, I'm like, what am I trying to do? Uh, but it will say, "Hey, we're not letting you do that." I, I figured that's what it was doing, where maybe something was going on with Google for a couple of minutes, and then it'll be fixed later. Mm-hmm. But no, so I would always change it manually. Today, I said. I'm going to Yahoo this. Why is this happening? Okay. And it said it's some light uh, malware stuff. And to get rid of it, you just uh, clear everything. Okay. So I said, okay. But then, man, signing into stuff again, even with everything saved, I, I'm just not going to like revisit certain websites. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just got a brand new computer and like the the slight inconveniences of just like having to re-log back into everything is like, this is not worth it. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. That's right. Like, I, I'm off Twitter for good now. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll use it on my phone maybe, but we've discussed this. If I'm tweeting or texting, it means I'm on my computer. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, if I got to log back into... like I. Uh, like putting in the brunch information and everything like that. That's all. That's all you now, man. You 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 got the sole keys oh. to the brunch Twitter account. It's just gonna die then, because <laughs> I got a new computer and I haven't logged back into that shit either. So we're just gonna be in a staring contest, <laughs> yeah, social media it's, wise. It's like when like the when hockey players are like, I'm gonna be the last one to leave the ice. That is so fucking annoying. <laughs> that's so annoying. It's so dumb. And I would get. Yeah, I would. Yeah. It's like so every dumb. team has their guy that does that. And sometimes they'd be like, who's going to go off? It's like, uh, the better guy, get, let the better player. It's, it's like everything else in life. The person who's better, just let them do get the thing they want to get. Yeah. It's so it's like better or prettier. Brad Marchand staring down some other guy on the ice. Or it's like, dude, what, what are the chances? What are the chances he's going to get off? If it's in the, if they're in the same realm of, of playing ability, whoever's hotter uh, gets to stay longer. Just let Brad Marchand stay on the ice an extra <laughs> few seconds. It's a stupid, silly thing, though. So, I cleared my cache. Is that how you say it there? Uh, correct. So now I, that's I, why I, nothing came up on it. I, I used to say cache. I think a lot of people did. And uh, I got recently... You got cooked? cooked? I got cooked for that recently. Wow. Yeah. In front of all your friends? Yep. 
Damn. By all my friends. Wow. <laughs> Damn. But yeah, uh, it looks like Burger King does zing Chick Fil A by donating its chicken sandwich profits to LGBTQ. Uh, what is that? The last word. Group. Group is the word. Uh, we're hitting you with all the hottest news from June of 2021. Let's see. Uh, today. Oh man, it's no offense to Upworthy or the person who wrote this. It's a real song and dance that's no, supposed to just okay. be. Give me the news. news story. Give me the news. This. All right, hold on. Let's. In the 1980s, Americans lived through the Cola Wars, one of the most aggressive battles in history of corporate junk food giants. Quick oh, pause. Brother. Discussed that with Spike recently. What? Cola I miss Wars? nothing more than the Cola Wars, and I'm stealing this take from Spike. Spike was sending me amazing commercials. Uh, there, there's one in particular where a kid goes to a vending machine and he gets a Pepsi. Mm-hmm. And he gets another Pepsi, and he puts them under his feet. He was too short to reach the Coke button. <laughs> That's pretty good. Amazing. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Shit like that. Like they used to be so. Man, brands used to be very, very petty. Yeah, they're not anymore. Not anymore. Which is hilarious because, like now in society, everybody has to pick a side on everything, and they get really annoying about whatever side they're on. But yet somehow. Like for 45 years, it was like Coke or Pepsi, pick one. And now you're allowed to like both apparently, and they're not petty towards each other. Fuck that. What were you as a kid? Coke. I was a Pepsi guy. Really? Yeah. I was always Coke. Yeah. I mean, there's a great uh, comedic bit about Coke <laughs> versus Pepsi oh, that God. I think would really represent, that would really present some, uh, some new ideas and new ways of kind of looking at this uh, this world we've created. Mm-hmm. You should check it out. G- Google uh, Coke versus Pepsi uh, joke. It'll it's it's like fifteen minutes long. <laughs> a lot of twists and turns. Worth it. A lot of restarts, but <laughs> a really really good joke. Anyway, uh, a recent report uh, Popeyes made a name for itself. Oh my god, this is a Bible. Um, Equality Act. Blah blah. blah yeah, okay. Uh, the the you, know, you, says, you don't want anything to read like a Bible when you're involving the LGBTQ community, too. I mean, that's no good. The the, the Kathy family is reading this right now and just furious. Uh, the King says LGBTQ rights during Pride Month, even on Sunday. Oh, that's the I remember they did. They were like, even on Sundays. Oh, yeah. I emoji your chicken sandwich craving can do good. We're making a donation to the HRC for every chicken sold. 6 3 through 6 30 with every king sold. Oh, I remember. Burger King Ch-king. will contribute. Yeah. They're really pushing the Ch King. Oh, yeah. And we, then we, we did like we a. We went in on the Ch King name. And was it a Ka Ching thing? Yes, or right. Or was yeah. it a Ch King thing? Was it Chicking? Yeah. Were they trying to. Was it a play on. It was a bad chicken? name for the sandwich. Just a very bad name for the sandwich. The Ch King. Yeah. The, but the, the sandwich wars, suffice to say, the sandwich wars never really got uh, heated up no. and uh cooking the way that cold the cola wars did yeah but now i feel like the cola wars are dead too because like pepsi has been established as like a second class soft drink yeah it's clearly losing but they both have so much money right because pepsi makes its money like in in like its offshoots doesn't it a keurig i want to say or dr pepper dr. owns Pepper's keurig, keurig yeah but who owns dr pepper I don't is know. It, Dr. If Dr. Pepper is its own thing, now this is turning into an episode of Time Crisis, but if Dr. <laughs> Pepper is its own thing... Uh, Nothing is its own thing anymore. Like, it's all part of something bigger. Like, I found out this weekend that, like, Volkswagen owns every fucking automobile company, basically. Mm. So I do, I do know one of the details I'm about to read, because I used to work in Burlington, Massachusetts, uh, two buildings ago. Yeah, I know Keurig that the Dr. Keurig Pepper, Dr. Pepper building is right behind the AMC. Yes. It is a uh, American beverage and coffee maker conglomerate in Burlington, Massachusetts. Uh, Wait, does it, it is it located in Burlington? Like, that's the headquarters? Yeah. I just thought that that was the building. Like, it was just like a office for Keurig Dr. Pepper. I didn't know that it's like located in Burlington, Massachusetts. That'd be amazing. If they're, they're like, you're... You know, Keurig Dr. Pepper just has so many headquarters, and you're you're at the uh, you're in the Atlanta office, and they're like, "We're transferring you to Burlington." And you're like, "Ah, oh, that other big office we have." They got to have other offices, yeah, other 100%. places. Though. Like they're, that, that could have. I mean, that could just be a like a 
like a distribution center, like or the head distribution headquarters, whereas like production headquarters could be somewhere else. I do know that uh, Dr. Pepper was in bed with Snapple at one point, and Ooh. Snapple didn't. Uh, I think Pepsi owned Snapple, or Pepsi may have owned, I uh, remember Nantucket Nectars. Those yeah. things still around? I don't think so. I got to say, I've been out on juice for so long. It's all sugar. Yeah. Gross. If I'm poisoning myself, I'm going with that Coke or Pepsi. By the right. way, I'll say, as an adult, I'm absolutely Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Yes. Yeah, because, I mean, you have a brain. So that's the uh, Burger King You Rule update. Pete didn't know. Pete was today years old when he learned that... Uh, that the you rule thing is a I it took me four seconds. But again, I I regret how I presented that to you. you if did, I had put gave, it in a different a order, of understanding. I gave you a huge heads up. I was tipping my pitches like crazy. Could have really Drop it. thrown you for a loop there. Uh, hey, check out the brunch Patreon. Patreon.com slash listen to brunch because we've got weekly bonus episodes discussing, among other things, Your Honor season two and the discussion we had on this last one was a real doozy because the source material is always a doozy. Your Honor has, we agreed, finally really begun this season. Yes. You've got Stuhlbarg it, yeah. doing a lot of peering. You've got Eugene, a.k.a. Justin, really uh, making magic happen with the old uh, pen and paper. The school not loving it. No one loving it. Photo realistic photos, uh, pictures of him committing murder with his own face. Just unbelievable. <laughs> it's so someone responded uh, to, I did uh, another Your Honor shit post, and someone responded. They were like, Yes, dude, such a good show. And I was like, Oh, that's not the message that we're sending here. <laughs> interesting. I'm not, uh, I'm not besmirching that person, but I was like, I never considered that anybody watched it because they thought it was good. I feel like most I watch pe- it because they keep making it. Mo- exactly. And mo- I think most people are in our camp there because like all the responses are like, yo, this show is fucking ridiculous. I can't believe they're doing this again. I poked over to the uh, Your Honor subreddit to just see like, what do they talk about on there? Yeah. It's small. <laughs> okay. There's like a thousand people. Okay. Like, no one's talking about Your Honor, except for us. Nobody's, like, actively going on the internet to talk about Your Honor. I think that, like, a lot of people that watch Your Honor probably watch it in shame. Yeah. Where they're like, ah, fuck, I know this isn't good, but I kind of like it, and I kind of want to see where it goes. That's where I'm at. Like, if it weren't for the podcast, I don't know if I'd tell anybody that I was watching Your Honor. Yeah, someone asked me the other day, they were like, I need some new shows, and I was like, I only watch two shows right now. And they're both for the podcast. One is because it's a video game that Pete likes, and the other is because... Stuhlbarg and Cranston are acting up. I don't know if I'm recommending either of these to some. Like I, I'd recommend The Last of Us yeah, to somebody. Yeah, definitely. It's like a ground floor thing. I definitely wouldn't recommend Your Honor, but I, I, it's keeping up with Your Honor is important to me. Yeah, and I, understanding what's happening with the, with that show and those actors. Do you feel that you can still recommend? Um, that you can still recommend The Last of Us after the uh, the, the graphic scene. In the last episode? Which graphic scene? The uh, smooch heard around the world. Oh, that that was weird. Does that, that was, happen in the game? No. No. Um, but no, that was weird. Um, but yeah, I can definitely still recommend it. Okay. I think it's been great through two episodes. I do too. Like this, uh, this last episode was where I was like, okay. I, granted, there are only three characters, eventually two characters in this episode. And I was like, okay. I know who everybody is right now. I know what they're doing. I was thinking of maybe doing subtitles for the second episode because I'm like, I'll be able to be reminded of character names and everything. But I've become a big subtitle subtitles guy. Um, depending on what I'm watching, but like if I'm watching a movie and I'm like really invested, I will turn on subtitles. Uh, I didn't have a say in the matter when I went to see Missing in theaters the other day. Oh, it was a subtitle show. Those subtitles was just on. And don't hate that. I was down for it. I think that it definitely helps you retain things. Yeah. And like whether it's names, whether it's plot points, like a lot of the times, and especially I'll tell you what, if I smoke or like do an edible before yeah. watching something, turning on the subtitles helps a thousand times over just to be able to like, 
not wonder if I heard something wrong. Like, because I, I, we've talked about this. Like, I get too like laser focused on like trying to retain everything yeah. when I'm high. And so like it kind of puts me a bit at ease to not have to feel like I have to like fully focus in on listening. Like I can read it. Friend of the podcast, Tommy Giles, got me into subtitles years ago. I don't always use them. I still most of the time don't use them, but I'm a big proponent of them. And it would be because we would discuss the shy and it was like season one and he just had everybody every character's name and everybody i'm like i go typically when i watch a show i'm actors names for like the yeah. first half a season and then maybe by the start of the second season it's i'm I'm fully immersed in it. If I have to talk about it, I'll just describe the character rather than saying their name. Like, do we... We probably still say Stuhlbarg and yes. Jimmy interchangeably when we discuss yeah, we Your do. Honor. we do. But yeah, man, you should have seen this guy talking about the shy. Like, two episodes in, he's like, can you believe what Kevin's doing? And I was like, I only know Papa because Papa's really cute. And other than that, I don't know any of the characters' names. Uh, how about Jason Mitchell? And he's like, he doesn't know actors' names. And yeah. we, we were just lost talking to each other, even good. though we were both watching the show and paying complete attention and knew what was going on in the show. Some people just don't know actors' names. Like my friend Mackie is like stunned all the time that I know actors' names, and he's like, "How do you know that?" It's he like thinks that like we're wizards. Yeah, I know it's unbelievable because Mackie's the kind of person that knows everything about like four things. Yeah, and. I'm somebody. I'm that way too, but I know everything about like 100 things, and they're things that the average person doesn't shouldn't really focus on. Yeah, that's fair. I, I feel like I'm more somebody who knows a little bit about a lot. Yeah, and not a lot about a little bit. That's a good thing to be, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that it it helps me in certain situations where like I can. Um, I can make conversation with a lot of different groups of people and like hold my own. But I think for a person like Mackie or a person like you, if you're like hyper focused on something, you can be very good at that certain thing, like a master of of some uh, like a ma what are they, what do they say that that phrase master of none? Uh, no, uh, I, I, jack of all trades, jack master of none. Yeah, or is that is that what is it? jack something of, like yeah, that? Yeah, some yeah, anyway. It's the you know what that is though. I was told recently. What? They call it uh, the ADD superpower. Okay. If you have ADD, uh, it, it, it helps to explain why certain people can just like lock in. And I, I, I have always just said nerd out mm -hmm. um, or pay too close attention to something. And so Jared, someone explained to me the other day, they were like, baseball. no, like what that is, is. And I was like, I'm, and I don't have as good an attention span uh, with other things. And if all things were equal, I'd probably maybe take a little uh, of my attention span away from listening to music and spread it out into other areas of life. And they were like, well, that's the ADD superpower where like the thing that interests you can get like 120% of your attention. Mm -hmm. And then other things you can get to 100 if you if you force if, yourself if you put in the work <laughs> yeah. but like it's a little bit of work it was yeah. like oh yeah so after having ADD for 100 years i finally understood the, the actual pros and cons of it but uh yeah I, i'm in on uh, i I'm, I'm in on the last of us right. and i knew i was like if i don't watch this one then i'm going to be playing catch up and i'm going to do the thing where i'm just like Look, this wasn't made for me, and I don't know any of this, but it's like I know that so many people are watching this show that didn't play the game. It's it was the the second biggest uh, premiere on HBO in the last twelve years. Do you know what the first was? Yeah. What? It was uh, House of Dragon. Nope. Yep. No. Nope. Yep. Lou Bega live in Paris. <laughs> Drop it. <laughs> that wasn't it. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. Yes, Lou Bega live in Paris. Yeah, no, it wasn't it. Do you think that we could make Lou Bega live in Paris happen? <laughs> on HBO? Probably yeah. not. I mean, we might be able to make it happen somewhere. Lou Bega live in Paris on HBO. We're trying to sell HBO the Lou Bega special. We, yeah, we should do a... <laughs> that uh, rock. We should do a shit post that's like, <laughs> The Last of Us has set uh, streaming records, blah, blah. That movie poster sucks. Except it's Lou Bega. 
<laughs> yes. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, two thousand. Please do that. Two thousand twos. Uh, no, Lou Bega no, live do it in like Paris. do it like 2014, just way later than Lou Bega was as, super popular. Okay, as long as it's a time though yeah. that HBO Max didn't exist, because that's <laughs> okay. a big part of it. Okay, fine. Yeah, let's let's we should definitely do that. That'd be good. Like an old, I can already see the basically what I'm envisioning is the movie poster for I Want to Dance with Somebody. That movie poster sucks. Except it's Lou Bega. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, it would add the uh, second biggest premiere on HBO, and the second episode had a 22% uh, spike in viewership than wow. the original. So more people on board with the episode number two. Uh, speaking of things that you should be on board with, how about these NFL playoffs? Huh? Ugh, Four NFL teams me. remain, two conference championship games, and only a few more shots to win big on the playoffs with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Counting down to Super Bowl 57, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Not a new customer? You can feel the conference championship thrills with stepped-up same-game parlays. Take your shot at an even bigger NFL payout and boost your winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. Which one of the games are you most excited about this weekend? Oh, I mean, to uh, to to be honest, I was uh, I was also a fan of the Cubs. Nice. Do you get that reference? No. Oh man, really? Yeah. They uh, it's uh, they asked Obama, so who's your favorite White Sox player growing up? And he was like, oh, ah, uh, uh, well. I mean, I mean to be honest, I also liked the Cubs. <laughs> could not name one. Just could not name a single White Sox player. Much like I can't name a single NFL game. You can't name any of the games. I know that I there's, can. Uh, wait, let me see if I can try because I'm okay, not a big NFL guy. Let the record guy. show. I can absolutely. You're unemployed. You could. I've been. I've been sucking these NFL games. All right, so we've got the Cincinnati Bengals against the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC. Mm -hmm. Then we've got every the, year. Correct. Then we've got the San Francisco 49ers yep. against the Philadelphia Eagles. Drop it. Yes, sir. I nailed it. I'd say that I'm more excited. Um I'm more excited about Joe Burrow versus yeah, Patrick. That's Mahomes. the answer. I it's it's a tough I don't know who to, who to root for though at this point. I everybody's pulling for the Bengals. I won't lie, I was kind of pulling for the Bengals last week. I was pulling for the fucking Bills. I wanted the Bills to win the Super Bowl, man. It's that's complicated. The uh, it's not. I, I wanted the Bills to win the Super Bowl this year too. I, I just wanted them to run over everybody. Yeah, and then same. once it became clear, like, uh, okay, Von Miller's hurt, and just like uh, enough things happened. Like even pre Demar Hamlin, it was like, so this is this just isn't happening. So let's just get these guys out of there and uh, and find somebody else. I, I want Joe Burrow though because he doesn't have a, a younger brother that's the worst. So I'm gonna root for Joe Burrow this How weekend. How in the world is that Patrick? Ma Mahomes' fault. It's not. I don't play. I don't hold it against Patrick Mahomes, but I just don't want. And I don't want Jackson Mahomes to 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 benefit. So he's, but he's not going to be half. Pat uh, Jackson Mahomes isn't going to care if Patrick Mahomes wins or loses. I think he'll care. I think because if he gets to go to the Super Bowl, he's going to get to do his like yeah. his dances and pop off his TikToks. He and, could go to the Super Bowl either I way. Know, Anybody go to the Super Bowl, man? I don't think he will. So I I would prefer a, a Jackson Mahomes less Super Bowl. I think I'm going Eagles. Okay, I like that pick a lot too. Go Birds! Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Washed. New customers can bet five dollars on conference championships and get two hundred in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code Washed. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions reply uh, apply see show notes for details you hear this uh allison williams news uh she presented the oscar she nomination. broke a bunch of news the, the the news from allison williams oh yeah she broke a bunch of news the apple doesn't fall far from the tree no <laughs> correct correct everything she said true too Ooh, so she's <laughs> So maybe it does fall all, far from the tree. All, yes, all these nominations really happened. Did she fly to the uh, the ceremony in a helicopter? Oh man, I don't want to touch that. <laughs> uh, Oscar nominees get on the brunch Patreon because we of course have the 
annual famous, really the I would say the main reason people subscribe to our Patreon. A but, pillar. A but pillar our, of yeah. the podcast. But our Patreon's been fun and goofing around anyway. We're uh, doing a, we're gonna do some uh, custom synopses and people synopses and people have requested which movies they want a synopsis for. So we're doing fun things like that. We got the Your Honor episodes, but the mini episodes on the Best Picture nominees are coming. Those, if you haven't had them heard them before, they're like 10, 15 minutes, something like that we'll yeah. do on each one. And if you go on the Brunch YouTube, you could already find our reviews for a lot of these movies, like Banshees and Tar and shit like that. But the ones that we do for the best picture those we really hone in more yeah we really go through with a fine tooth comb when we talk everything everywhere all at once i'm gonna bring up biff whiff being in it i had forgotten that he was in it stuff like that so get on there you patreon.com slash listen to brunch and if you're a new listener and you don't know what we're talking about you can go back and watch last year's oscars mini reviews those are on our youtube page we kind of like redid the youtube page and organized it a lot better so if you go to our youtube page uh, you can scroll down and you'll find all of last year's mini episodes for the the Oscars and get a sense of what we're talking about. I believe I don't think we've like officially discussed this, but like we're gonna put the uh, the mini episodes on Patreon first, and then we'll open them up on YouTube. Yeah, I think that we typically d- like right before the Oscars, we'll kind of let them all spill spill out. And I know that that's we're kind of cheating ourselves because I, I i know the people who watch those sometimes save it for the weekend of the oscars mm-hmm. like them and their significant other will just binge the mini episodes even if they haven't seen the movies which is kind of fun uh although i don't know i'd like for them to watch the movies and everything but yeah. it's a, but it, it makes you extremely prepared for the oscars if you and haven't you, seen and you everything. get to participate without sinking like a ton of time in yeah so uh yeah but, well, i mean we'll We'll do tons of Oscar stuff on the Patreon uh, leading up to the show. When is it? Like two months? A month and a half? Two months? Something like that? It's usually after the Super Bowl, but I feel like it's been pushed back now because... I feel like the, Gram- the Grammys are after oh, the sorry, Super Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. music's biggest night. That's right. That's right. Now we're definitely a, a time <laughs> crisis episode. <laughs> Oscars 2023 date... March 12th. March 12th. All right. So, yeah, we'll have uh, plenty of of stuff uh, between now and then on the Patreon. Also, I'm sure, on the regular episodes and on the YouTube and stuff like that. But support the show. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash listen to brunch. So the everything everywhere all at once. I guess that that is like the big takeaway because it had 11 noms. Banshees of Sharon had nine also, All Quiet on the Western Front's had, Front had nine, Elvis eight, The Failedman seven, Top Gun Maverick six. Uh, best picture noms are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, which means we have to see that movie. Ugh. That's one of my big takeaways. Same. The Banshees of Inna Sharon, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, Women Talking. Uh, What's your to see number for the best picture? I still need to see Avatar. I need to finish All Quiet on the Western Front. So to be fair to it, I will restart it. Uh, and I need to see Triangle of Sadness and Women Talking. So I have four to go, which is more than I usually would this time of year. Yeah, and I have I have three. I have Avatar, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking, which is... that I think that's the lowest number that I've ever had going into the Best Picture noms. Uh, I kind of... This year was pretty predictable. Yeah. And I would say... Uh, Elvis was the biggest surprise for me in this category uh, in terms of movies that I've seen and did not expect to be here because I, I I haven't seen, you know, the three that I mentioned. Avatar, I fully expected to get nommed in a bunch of different places, probably best picture. And I can't speak to the other two. Don't know a ton about them. I know that a lot of people like women talking. Don't know much about Triangle of Sadness. But I never would have predicted Elvis ending up with a Best Picture nomination. Elvis, I thought, was going to get nominated and that I would roll my eyes at it. I didn't think that I would roll my eyes as hard as I did, though, because it got nominated over The Whale, RRR, After Sun. There are several others I would have ahead of Elvis. But those three in particular, I mean, like I would have Glass Onion ahead of Elvis. I I mean, I, I can't remember if I ended up sharing my favorite movies of uh, 2022, but Elvis, I think, came in 
somewhere around the middle of yeah, the top 50. I, I, I put out my, my top 20 um, a few a few weeks ago, and Elvis was not in consideration. There were a few movies that um, you know kind of were right on the cutoff, but not even, Elvis didn't even come close. Elvis, make, I had my top twenty. Not even, not, not even my top ten. Elvis, I had thirty eighth out of forty seven movies. Damn. And we're gonna get to another takeaway. So Elvis is not my most outrageous. What the fuck is that doing there? We'll get to that. No, sh- I know. Shortly. I think I know what you're talking about. It's a movie you haven't seen, right? Yeah. Okay. The, uh, I have a pretty good guess. Can I guess now? And yeah. Anna De Armas is best actress. Holy shit! I think that- a lot of people. Most people are in that camp. That is, what the fuck were they watching? <laughs> she didn't know what accent she was doing. She didn't know what character she was playing. That was such a bad performance. And I have no issue with Ana de Armas other than the fact that she sucked so much in Blonde. Like, I don't come away from Ana de Armas movies being like, man, she stinks. I'll come away from it being like, that movie wasn't very good. Or... Why did I just watch Knock Knock? I'm going to have nightmares the rest of my life. Yeah, but typically, she, I'm not like, wow, she sucks because she doesn't suck. She is terrible in that movie, but everything about that movie is terrible. So I don't even blame her. She just probably got whatever contagious terribleness was going around that set. Yeah, that that happens sometimes, too. Big and time. I don't think we've even uh, brought See, up Tom Hanks, Elvis. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah, uh, I don't even think we, we've ever brought up like the discussion or, or uh, approach the discussion like, hey, is Ana, Ana de Armas good? I think that we're kind of taking everybody's word for it. Yeah, and no, like, I think she's en- good. And enjoying the things that she's in for the most part. She throws a for, uh, couple more clunkers. She'll be on the hot seat. She for is. Sure. On, she's on a very cold streak right now yeah. because she was in uh, the that water blonde movie. and the uh, deep water underwater in the Some pool. Some shit. Yeah, it's a movie where Ben Affleck is clearly killing everybody <laughs> yes. the entire time, and they're like, "Who is killing <laughs> everybody that?" Ben Affleck's wife keeps fucking. In one of the worst final scenes in uh, in the history of 2023 Were there, like, cinema. Were there slugs or something? There no, was... remember he was, one of them was trying to escape on a bicycle. Oh yeah, I, uh, I remember that for yeah. sure. But there was a, they, 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 there's like a shed where there's, I don't know what, the, there's, I want to say there's slugs. Oh yeah, he's got a, he's got like a greenhouse full of slugs. I wanted to slug you after I saw that movie. Because I made you watch it? Or I, I don't you think you made it. me watch it, no. I, I needed. I was like, hopefully you're gonna come up with a reason as to why I would have slugged you after that movie. <laughs> I would. I would assume like because I told you to watch it. Yeah. No, we were probably both very gung ho. I remember we at. at uh, it's an Affleck movie. We have to watch it. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's where all the the Ana de Armas Ben Affleck stuff came from. True. It was like right, a, yeah. Yeah. It was like the "Don't worry, darling" of Ben Affleck. I uh, wonder be- that relationship didn't work out. <laughs> Best director: Martin McDonough, Daniel Kwan. Dan- I should say Daniels. Did what'd you say? I said the Daniels. Daniels. That's that they have a joint Twitter account and it's the Daniels. Their Twitter account is the Daniels? I think so, yeah. So I've been told do not call them the Daniels. It's really? Daniels. Yes. Okay, maybe it is. Maybe it's just Daniels on Twitter. Like the Pixies are actually Pixies. Yeah. Some bands and things will do that. Uh people get very snooty when you call Daniels. Let's see. If their Twitter account is the Daniels, that I know that. Let's see, maybe it's two Daniels. Two? No, it's not two Daniels. I'm gonna Daniels directors. Oh, Wikipedia official. Daniels directors. And see, look at this: Daniel Kwan and Daniel. See how well you know your English language. Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheiner, known collectively as the Daniels, are American film directors. So this confirms that it's Daniels. Yeah, because the the is not capitalized. Good. Yeah. I I'm was not an slug, idiot. I was going to slug you, man, if you didn't know that. Good job. Okay. Uh, uh, Steven Spielberg, Todd Field for Tar. And uh, Ruben uh, Osland for Triangle of Sadness. That's one that uh, neither of us have, have seen yet. Uh the Daniels have to win. I thought Tar was really direct, uh, well directed. Martin McDonough, I, I want to give him a hug for Banshees, but it's going to be either Daniels or Spielberg. Um, yeah, I mean, I, and I, I wouldn't would, put I Spielberg would, that high, but it's going I would, to. Come I down wouldn't to those pull. Two. Uh, I wouldn't pull Martin McDonough out of that list either. Yeah, I think I think Banshees is a 
is heavily dependent on great directing too. Yeah. So <clears throat> I definitely think that those three are the uh, the favorites. And I would say if I had to pick one out of the group, it's probably Daniels. Um, but I would say Daniels, Martin McDonough and Spielberg would be my top three. But knowing how much everybody fucking loves Spielberg and how much kind of acclaim he has with the Academy, I wouldn't be surprised if he would. it was like in the one or two slot either. You want uh, betting odds on this? I yeah. always try to toss it yeah. in when we do the uh, mini episodes. And uh, by the way, with this sort of stuff, we will sprinkle in betting odds, but we're also going to go with our gut. This is the pod. This podcast was the only place, and uh, I'm going to toot your horn, Pete, for podcasting with such a smarty pants. Mm -hmm. We were the first podcast that said Coda last year. That yeah. like when Coda was at the bottom of the betting odds. And it just seemed and felt like the type of movie that ends up winning, and it won. So we'll definitely pay attention to the betting odds, but we won't be beholden to them because there's obviously upsets every year. All right, so uh, before you give me the odds on favorites for uh, Best Picture, I want to I was going to just do director for this conversation. Right, well, I, I want to pick my initial, like, based off of, like, initial gut feeling. Yeah. One on record that I think that uh, that Banshees is going to win. Okay, Banshees is... Uh, do, do you know where Banshees falls, betting odds-wise? No, I don't. That's why I wanted to say If before. you had to guess, where would you think? Um, second or third, just based on the number of nominations. Yeah, it has the second best odds. Okay. Oh, what do you think is first? Uh, everything Everywhere. Correct. So I'll just give you best uh, picture. Everything Everywhere All at Once is minus 165 banshees plus 225 top gun maverick plus a thousand fatal mins plus 1100 all quiet on the western front and tar both plus 3500 and then women talking avatar elvis and triangle sadness rounded out but for best director uh daniels best odds in minus 140 spielberg second best odds at plus 110 martin mcdonough is plus 1200 I would take that bet. That, if yeah, that's, that's a value bet. That's a very good value bet. I think that it'll be. I think that it'll be Daniels. But if if I'm like determining who did the best job, I think that Martin McDonough gives you such better value there. Yes, I just don't think that, that he's going to win. Uh, best lead actor: Austin Butler for Elvis, Colin Farrell for Banshees, Brendan Fraser for The Whale, Paul Mescal for After Sun. And Bill Nye for Living, which I've not seen. Uh, We've talked about this many a time, uh, where there is a very strong best actor, best a actress. Oh yeah, split. like whose year is it? Yeah, yeah. And this year it is clearly the actors. Yeah, because this this always brought it. This, this year. is fucking stacked. Uh, no disrespect to Bill Nye, we love Bill Nye. Yeah, I I haven't seen Living, but I'll tell you the. Those four with Butler, Farrell, Frazier, and Mezcal, that is a heavyweight bout. Yeah. It's Frazier's gonna win, which is great, and that's who I want to win. My main takeaway from it is that just that I'm happy to see Mezcal nominated. I can't really comment on the Nai thing. Colin Farrell, I'm sad that he won't win, but he's probably got, let's see, the betting odds. He's probably second or third. He's third. Behind Frazier and uh, and Austin Butler. Okay, so i I would rather I would give it to Farrell before I would give it to Austin Butler. But I would like fringe nominate Butler. I don't have a problem with him being nominated. No, definitely not. Uh, and I kind of want him to win just so that he, I can see if he does the Elvis accent again. Yeah, <laughs> they said that. You see that they said that it might be permanent now. Oh yeah, that's outrageous. Yeah, insane. I mean, if. If it's still there, like two years after he shot the movie, it's probably not going anywhere. It's psychotic that <laughs> he just has adapted the Elvis accent. Uh, uh, yeah. Best lead actress. Best lead actress. I mean, this one is probably I would say the easiest runaway. Second pick. easiest in my mind. With uh, foreign film. No. Well, foreign film. It's one of those situations where there's one foreign film that's nominated for best picture. Yeah. And that's where that one is like, okay, well, then if it's nominated for Best Picture and none of these others are, then it has to win Best Foreign Film. Uh, no, we'll, we'll, you'll know when I get to it, okay. I think. But uh, Best Lead Actress, Kate Blanchett, Tar, Andre Armas Blonde, 
Andrea Riceborough for Two Leslie, which uh, we've not seen. Michelle Williams for The Fablemans and Michelle Yeoh for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. This should be... Kate in a Runaway. Yeah, yeah like, so I was going to say, like, this, there should be a conversation, I think, though, between Kate Blanchett and Michelle Yeoh, but this is going to be such a runaway yes. for Kate Blanchett. Uh, De Armas, as you snuffed out, is the biggest outrage of all these nominations for me. I cannot believe she was nominated for that performance. Best Supporting Actor is where I say there shouldn't even be other nominees. Brendan Gleeson for Banshees, Brian Tyree Henry for Causeway. Uh, shout out Brian Tyree Henry. I'll be honest, didn't know he had it like that. Yeah, because Jud- you don't watch Atlanta. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, Judd Hirsch for The Fablemans, Barry Keoghan for Banshees, and uh, Kiwi Kwan for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. I am so, so happy that Barry Keoghan was nominated. That's the only takeaway you can have there because if there's no other real discussion to be had because Kiwi, Kiwi Kwan is going to sprint, run, whatever word you want so many miles ahead of everybody else with this i mean i i think that like is the favorite and should win but i wouldn't say that it's like a runaway as far as relative to the competition as Kate blanchett in the best actress category i agree yeah 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 I mean, it's, like you like, said like, like this was the year of the dudes great, yeah like uh keoghan you know I, I think that there are contenders in that category I don't think that there are contenders in the best actress c- category. It's just Kate Blanchett and everybody else. I think that in that if Kate Blanchett I guess weren't I can't there, fully say that like with Michelle like, Williams was awesome in the Fablemans. I thought I didn't. I didn't come away from that being like she was so good. Like my big, my one takeaway from Tar, or like my one heaping lump of praise from Tar, was how good Kate Blanchett was. So like that one struck me as she this is hers to lose uh i haven't seen um whatever what's andrea uh, to leslie yeah andrea riseborough uh so i guess i will hold off on that official declaration but i think it's kate in a runaway yeah it, but it's also a little oscar Beatty, which is annoying tar the, tar yeah yeah like yeah. They, they they were like hey kate i don't know how much money she got for this movie I bet it's probably not her biggest payday. And they were no. like, hey, do you want to win an Oscar? We're going to make you an Oscar. We're making a movie for you to win an Oscar. Sure. That's but essentially she, what that movie but is. But she fucking nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Best Supporting Actress, Angela Bassett for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Hong Chow for The Whale, Carrie Condon for Banshees, Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything Everywhere All at Once, Stephanie Su for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, I would say a toss-up. Two person race here. Yeah, between Bassett and Condon and <laughs> Wait, uh, what? Uh, what? I would say Hong Chow and Condon. Uh, no, no, Hong Chow. I'm Hong Chow. I don't. I am so happy was nominated. I bet she's. Uh, no, I'll, really? I'll be over the moon. I'll be over the moon if she wins. I, I thought she was great in the whale. So I, I yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, but I don't think that she was expected that she was any sort of shoo-in to be nominated. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, my notes That's are surprising. Uh, I mean, I didn't see Black Chow Panther. Is probably so I can't a distant say. fifth here, but I'm pumped she got a nom. Okay. But, uh, hold on. Let's do uh, supporting. Uh, again, betting odds aren't. Did you Did you see Black Panther? No. So how do you know the bat? Or do you just are you going off betting odds and like the buzz? I they're just buzz. Okay. Everybody said when that came out, everybody said she was going to get best supporting actress. Okay. Uh, All right. She, uh, Angela Bassett is, uh, ooh, a pretty f- heavy favorite. Um, really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Carrie Condon is second. And Hong, so Hong Chow is fifth, but not a distant fifth. Uh, Bassett minus 227. Carrie Condon plus 150. Curtis plus 900. Stephanie Sue plus 1400. Hong Chow plus 1600. So that is, that's, that is distant when you consider the gap between like Jamie Lee Curtis and then like the rest right. of the field. But so I'm it's saying that very... she's not like the, the plus like 3000 that you'll find yeah, with fair. the, the worst of fair. Like Paul Meskel is, uh, plus 3300. They are like, yo, your award is you got nominated. <laughs> yeah. If there's room, you can come to the show, but <laughs> you are not part of this. You can be a seat filler. Don't tell people that you got nominated because. <laughs> 
don't, I don't know if if another guy calls us back, you might be out. Is, is so is is Mezcal uh, further than further than Bill Nye? Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. Wow. Bill Nye is plus. That movie poster sucks. Except it's Lou Bega. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's do it. There's a big three there. Frazier is minus one thirty six. Butler, I'm sorry, Elvis is plus two hundred, <laughs> and Farrell is plus two fifty. And then you jumped to plus two thousand for Bill Nye. Okay. Those are. We'll talk. I mean, if you have thoughts on the other big categories, I just want to make sure that we were able to touch the director, actor, mm-hmm. actress, and uh, and best picture ones. But this is going to be, as I, as we said off the top, eleven nominations for everything, everywhere, all at once. Massive. Huge. Good year for a twenty four. Massive year for a twenty four. Uh, so they had, uh, Banshees, Everything Everywhere, um, um, After Sun. Yep. Is, uh, is Triangle of Sadness or Women Talking in there? Um, I, let me see. Um, hold on. Because Tar isn't an A24, is it? No. Yeah. Triangle of Sadness is... not but it was in a neon oh so neon's a big uh yeah big up and uh but it it came down it was in a bidding war with uh with a24 okay so they they really spent to uh to get it pretty cool uh what was i going to check it uh yeah yeah banshees Banshees is not a24 it's not yeah i just wanted to i thought it was you said it confidently enough that i felt like a dick for checking but i just didn't no, and I still don't know who put out uh, Banshees. But I generally also don't really care too much when someone puts something out, unless it's A24. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, you are right. Neon is uh, Neon's kind of moving up the, the ranks. Yep, you see that little card and you're like, hmm. Because Neon was, I believe, Parasite, correct? Ooh. And I think that that's like, that was like the real arrival of Neon as... Um, as like a, a big time challenger. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, man. Do you think there's going to be any uh, sort of parasite esque uh, Bong Joon Ho takeover for any of the movies? I don't know. Like who has who has the biggest opportunity to have a moment uh, around this year's Oscars? <laughs> what if it was Top Gun Maverick? Top Gun Maverick is like that second so tier movie that just like snuck in and stole everything. I'm so happy that it got nominated, though. I'm so happy. That it's, terrible Lady Gaga song got nominated, though. I know. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm so happy that Top Gun got nominated, though, because like there there should be uh, there should be a re- like not every Best Picture nominee nomination should be like this artistic, uh, like weird movie. You shouldn't have to have like a vibe to to necessarily hit the Best Picture nom. You can have a big, big ass blockbuster, big ass action movie that you do everything in like incredible form and get rewarded for it. Yeah. And especially in the day and age of 10 noms. Right. There is no excuse to not. And I know that there was no question that Top Gun Maverick was going to get nominated, but it would be very weird if we lived in a world where 10 movies got nominated for Best Picture every year and some excuse were hatched to exclude a movie like top gun maverick that movie rocks what if tom cruise it'd be hilarious though if like tom cruise were up and they're like oh is man it's gonna be having like, a moment it's gonna be man i really liked brendan Fraser and colin farrell this year but god if tom cruise and austin butler aren't just lurking back there <laughs> and they're just like sitting next to each other just plotting scheming i feel like the daniels or sorry, Daniels. Yeah, could uh, don't be rude. Could be the um, the the captivators of the moment. Yeah, because we've gotten a lot from like Brendan Fraser already. So like, no disrespect there, obviously, but he's ha- he's having and has had his moment for a while. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I could see Daniels making a splash. We do, especially need... with how many nominations. Yeah, they got. we do need a new person too. 
we need someone to kind of steal our hearts. Yeah. A couple of years ago, it was, uh, I mean, three years ago, it was Bong Joon-ho for sure. Yep. The next year, do you remember who it was? Remember uh, the woman from Minari? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. she was like, I don't know why they bring me here. I don't get <laughs> Like, hey, who are these bozos? Hey, yeah. Just like sack tapping presenters. And like, oh, sorry, no English. And then just like <laughs> speaking, like just like fucking with everybody. And last year it was uh, it was Hans Zimmer in his bathrobe. In, oh, yeah. In France. But they brought her back, though. Remember, they brought her back as a presenter. And she was <laughs> like, it's me, pussies. And we're like, whoa. <laughs> Man, <laughs> the mouth on this one. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, we're we're definitely due for for it's always somebody. Yeah, wait, was last year uh, was last year the Oscars the slap? Yeah, damn. So yeah, Will Smith was. So uh, three years ago, we we're the, the world fell in love with Bong Joon Ho. Yeah. Next year, the world fell in love with uh, the the woman from Minari, and last year. The world was introduced was uh, obsessed with Hans Zimmer for like forty five minutes, and then then they were introduced to Will Smith. Yes, correct. Um, You know who else is like kind of who should lightly be in there is Spike Lee for how he announced Bong Joon Ho. Remember? No, he was like Joon Bong Ho, and the winner is Bong Joon Ho. (laughs) (laughs) And I think I. I think I actually ended up Googling, like, is it actually Pong or something? And then found that what he was doing was well-intentioned, but it was just very different from anything that we'd heard before. He was, like, trying to give it, like, the correct pronunciation. Yeah. like Not the Americanized version. Exactly. Like, Chara's name, I think, actually is, like, Hara. Okay. But it's Chara. Everyone says Chara, and he's accepted. Uh, Like, Christian Pulisic is, like, Say it, Pulisic. Yeah. I don't want to figure out what it is. I think that he was trying to do an authentic one. People were like, what? <laughs> Who's that? Yeah, we'll see if... Uh, I don't think Will Smith will be there this year. No, I think that he is like legitimately he's, I mean, he's for like five, not allowed to be five, there. six, seven years. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it could be longer than that. He... Um, yeah, and he's not nominated for anything this year. No. Nope. Yeah. I don't Bummer. think he what, what what if he presented for or what if they were like uh well he in won? an upset Paul Mescal is one uh like best actor uh he's not like here to accept uh, his the, the award via like Zoom it's fucking Will Smith you didn't say anything <laughs> about the internet and he comes in and I uh man I wonder if they do. Fu- I mean, they're going to make a shitload of jokes about Will Smith in this year's. Uh, it's we gonna- should get out ahead of that. We should write the jokes every week between now and the Oscars. We should bring jokes that we think they might make about Will Smith. We could do one at the end of every uh, every Best Picture uh, yeah. mini-, mini episode. And like 500 others, because I really want to cover <laughs> yes. our bases and make sure that we have everything. Okay. And, and then, then we, we could do, do the a thing- super cut afterwards. Yeah. Because we'll we'll get at least one of them. Yeah. Remember when Amy Schumer got shit because she made the joke about leaving a good place uh, for Leo's yes, yeah. ex-wives or yes, girlfriends? Yeah. And someone was like, hey, I tweet that. I'm like, you know, we all tweet everything, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, Just write it down in a book and throw it away. Yeah, but uh, Will Smith won for King Richard, He correct? sure did. Yeah. And isn't it the... Uh, doesn't the the two winners, best actress and best actress, they usually always do. present the yeah, next it, year? It's not going to happen this year. Yeah, not allowed to be there. That's Hit, tough. He struck somebody. 